So, hey everybody, how you doing? Uh, Jeff Yates, Director of Volunteer Operations, uh, here with Josh Jubal Shane. I'll let Josh introduce himself in, in a little bit. Um, we've got over 30 people registered uh, for today's midday session um, in Trout Week, so I wanted to keep everybody muted um, just so we get a good clean recording. Uh, that way you'll be able to share it. Uh, the, the video of this will be on our Facebook page because we're streaming live, but also on our YouTube channel. Um, if you have questions throughout or want to share uh, anything, uh, whether it's a tip or tactic you have of your, your own, uh, feel free to use the Q&A or the chat function. Um, I like the Q&A best for asking questions of Josh. Um, use the chat function. Uh, you all can network with each other um, as well as, as, as uh, kind of just connect, share who you are, where you're from, things of that nature. Um, and we'll get started in, in just a couple minutes because um, it's lunchtime on the West Coast, and we want to give folks time to end their in end, end their work Zoom call and jump on their um, fun Zoom call while they're eating a sandwich. Um, so, but uh, as I said, don't hesitate to reach out uh, in the Q and A or the chat. Uh, another thing I should point out: we do have the closed captioning set on today's presentation. So, if you have a hearing uh, impairment or would just prefer to be able to see the subtitles. Uh, down in the bottom of your screen, you'll see there's a live transcript tab. You click that and you can click show subtitle and you'll be able to see the subtitles, um, the transcript of this this event. So, um, Josh, I think with, with that being said, um, we're uh, ready to get getting everybody going in and yeah, we'll uh, we'll get started. That way you have got plenty of time for a Q&A and, &A and uh, uh, I'm going to stop my video. Uh, Cool. Well, um, thanks. Thanks for having me, Jeff and um, others. I hope um, everyone is enjoying uh, a lot of the cool events that are happening at Trout Week right now. Um, I know it's exciting. I've been kind of um, involved in it a lot with the social media component for Trout Unlimited. Um, I also run the, uh, not my sole job, but I do run uh, the Instagram channel. So if y'all ever have any questions, um, please reach out to me. Um, my name is Josh Duplichain. Um, I have been with Trout Unlimited for a little over nine years now and in various forms of communication, but primarily um, I focus on visual storytelling for Trout Unlimited and its volunteers. Um, so with that being said, um, I know everyone tends to have a lot of questions about photography. We've talked about it a lot in various blogs and forums at tu.org um, and the digital magazine as well. And um, I thought it would be cool. And Jeff, Jeff also thought it would be great to um, just give people a little bit of rundown on, you know, I know the seasons are changing and right now is actually a ridiculously beautiful time to be outside to um, relax, take some photos, do some fishing, and, and I'll kind of get into that a little bit more as we go on. Um, you know, first and foremost, it, I, I think you have to um, understand what it is that you would like to photograph and, and, and kind of what your vision is for that, you know? And, and, what, and by that, I mean, um, you know, a lot of us have kind of a, different um uh, a lot of us have a different reason for what we do and the, the beauty of photography as we all know it's it's very subjective it's 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 you know honed to your personal vision and your personal style um mine might be a lot different than yours and yours might be a lot different than mine but it, it's a it's a an intriguing way of communicating um and especially gosh given today's uh, I was looking for my phone, you know, the social media component of everything and the ease of sharing photographs now and how we do that. Um, so with that being said, I, I think Jeff is still here. I, I think I'm going to switch. I didn't abandon to, you, promise. I'm here. Okay. Right, right. <laughs> I think I'm going to switch to sharing my screen. I've got um, a little bit of a deck that I've put together just for folks that are interested in, and like uh, Jeff mentioned, I, I'm kind of more of a conversational person. So if, if people have thoughts or questions based on this, um, please feel free to ask. I, um, 
I encourage it, frankly. Um, so I'll do what I can to keep an eye on that. And I'm going to share this desktop screen. Uh, maybe this will work here. Share this uh, full screen play. Let's see if we can get this going, Jeff. Um, OK, so if everyone can see us here, um, I'm going to try to wiggle over the, there we go, we got the comment section going. Yeah, as Jeff mentioned, I am in Colorado um, based on the Front Range. Um, I travel, uh, my technical uh, title is a senior producer, which, you know, that can be in a lot of things. But um, basically, I travel everywhere from, you know, Virginia to Oregon, Colorado, Washington, California, Alaska, all those places. Um, well, I travel a lot more pre-COVID, but now um, focused a lot on things that I can get to in Colorado, which is kind of refreshing. Um, but I, I'm tasked with, I, I like to say I have a pretty, um, I, I love my job at TU because I get to spend a week at a time with uh, folks from different parts of our organization, whether it's uh, a week with volunteers working on a project or it's um, in uh, the Tetons in Wyoming with Leslie Steen working on a a habitat project and telling that story or traipsing up to Alaska with someone like Mark Hieronymus who's working on steelhead surveys. So as you can see, um, and then last night or yesterday afternoon, Jeff and Mark and Dustin presented on Nations River and I had the uh, great fortune to go meet up with Mark and Dustin and tell that story with them. Um, and it's really collaborative, you know, and that's kind of the way I look at um, photography and telling stories is like, you know, you're working with somebody, you're telling their story, you kind of want them to be um, represented, you want to represent them well and what they're doing. And so it's always a, a collaboration between them and, and yourself. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to go forward here a little bit. Um, how do I move, Jeff? I'm trying to see if I can move some of this stuff around so I can see what I'm doing here. Um, with this, what can uh, visuals do for Trout Unlimited? Um, you know, I think with this presentation, I, I, I like the idea of all of us working collaboratively, frankly. I mean, it, we're able to share images uh, across different platforms. Um, you guys can share with me on Trout Unlimited's uh, Instagram page. Um, and, I, and I've reposted a lot of those uh, that, are, that are super cool and um, carry a cool message, whether you're with a specific chapter or you're an individual um, working out in the field or just enjoying your weekend, doing some volunteer work or what it, whatever it may be. Um, I like to think of us as all kind of working together to tell one large story, you know, and, and, and that might be um, a way to connect members to a place or a project. Um, you know, capturing like the real meaning of our outfit and what we do um, across the country. There's so many of you guys doing um, incredible work that really, um, you know, a lot of it can't be recognized fully um, if we don't document it. And and I think that's kind of what intrigued me into photography from the from the onset. Um, and and this is a an, and and I just put some of these up here to kind of bullet point a few of the reasons why I do this. Um, but I think it also applies to a lot of what other folks here that might be listening um, would take photography as well. So um, I like people, Trout Unlimited, you know, we, we are focused on people. There's, there's a lot of you guys out there um, that are doing such incredible work. Um, it's not always about the fish or the place or the habitat um, uh, or the water. It's, it's about the people that make this all a reality, that, that are working hard and fighting hard to protect and restore and connect with others to tell these stories of what we're doing. Um, we're also here to engage, you know, prospective um, donors and volunteers and media so we can get that message out. So I, I, I mean, your photography out there um, in Portland, California, the Adirondacks, Virginia, Michigan, like it all matters and it all is collective. I, I obviously can't be in one place and neither can anybody else, but but with all of us working together and getting a little bit better at our craft, um, I think we would be able to cover all those bases and provide some insight into different projects going on. So today's world is uh, is wonky. Um, it's I <laughs> I I'm I'm not that old, but I'm I'm old enough to have started photography when it was when I did film photography, and I didn't get into digital until my mid twenties. Um, 
And so I have kind of a, a different take. I, I used to see things in print. There's, you know, plenty of great magazines out there, um, fly fishing focus, conservation focus, but now it's, it's really pivoted towards the digital components of what we do, which as much as some of us may begrudge um, social media or digital outlets, I really believe that this is the best time to be sharing and telling and um, using this online platform for the greater good. Um, and that excites me. Um, so I have a few points on here. These are some of the things I've picked up on throughout the year. Um, I read somewhere recently that an estimated 84% of communications will be visual by 2022 and saying that, you know, that that's a pretty big number saying that a lot of what we're doing and seeing is all visual. Um, I, I, I thought that was interesting, but I, I don't know if they hear information, they only kind of retain 10% of what they're hearing versus if they see it as 65. Um, I can tell you from my personal way of learning and seeing and doing is, is definitely more visual. Um, and I believe that applies to a lot of people. Um, posts that are, you know, like Instagram is a visual based platform. Um, there's others out there that are very visual based, you know, 60, 650% higher engagement, which is um, pretty huge. Uh, right. So um, those numbers speak for themselves. You guys see it, you guys see something um, th that stops you in your tracks and you're scrolling, um, whether it's a person, a place, the light, um, a fish, whatever it may be, it's going to stop you for a second. And then maybe you'll take the time to engage with that or read or try to learn more as we go forward. I do have a lot of, um, so this is kind of transitioning into a lot of people ask the question, what gear do you use? Um, how do you make that photo? Um, how can I make a photo similar to this? And I think those are all really fair questions to ask. It's, I look, I, I, I try not to, um, I try not to look past some of those questions because I think, you know, someone like me who's been, I've been doing this since I was 14, um, 41 now. Um, and um, I've, I've had the same questions going in my head uh, for a long time. And I've learned to kind of pick up on what different people are doing and understand my personal vision for this. But that being said, I love the saying that came about, I would guess it was kind of at the onset of, you know, the digital, the, the mobile photography uh, craze that has happened is, you know, the best camera is the one that you have with you. And I think you need to let that sit for a second because you don't want to get, you don't want to get in your own way um, by being caught up and you got to have this gear or that gear. And I'm sure um, most of the folks on this uh, presentation are um, anglers themselves first and photographers. And, and I would get, I would hedge my bets on saying that you all would agree in angling that um, gear sometimes isn't always the sole answer for catching fish. You know, it's technique, it's studying uh, behaviors, it's um, just being present um, in, in a moment. So I agree with that. And whether it's this camera on the back of these things or a bigger camera, like, you know, that we use for, for work to mid-size cameras that we tote around, I bring all kinds of visuals here, uh, Jeff, but, you know, whether it's a full on underwater housings for things, you know, you've got different ways to tell your story. Um, mine just happened to be a little more focused on my profession, which um, requires some of those items. Um, but um, with that being said, uh, mobile photography has come a long way. And here's some thoughts uh, I have. Oh, here we go, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, I got the new uh, 12 Max and, the, and he's right. These, these new phones are um, pretty robust. They do great video. They do great stills. I've noticed the file sizes are big enough for um, even print quality uh, images, which is pretty cool. Um, so here are my here are a couple tips if you're using this this camera, you know this this thing lives. If I'm shooting, if I'm out in the field and I'm say I'm just fishing and I'm never just fishing, I've I've got photos on the brain too. So um, ask anyone I fish with. Uh, 
but I've always got this thing, you know, tucked in the waiter pocket or tucked in the, the hip pack or one of those places, right? Um, hopefully it's on airplane mode when I'm fishing, but I keep it around for the sole purpose of quick documentation um, or, or just more relaxed documentation sometimes. And I think a lot of us can be intimidated by, you know, some of the, the bigger, the bigger rigs, right? Like, while they do a great job, I think we can all get lost in the menus and the shuffling around of um, apertures and shutters and um, what it all means, right? And, and I think a good way to put yourself into photography first is to just eliminate some of those factors, frankly. And that may mean using a phone. It may mean putting your camera on aperture priority one time or shutter priority or full on automatic, frankly. I think, I think any of those options are good. And I don't, I don't believe that there's an, a wrong way to do that. Um, so with that being said, moving closer. Uh, I, like, I like this saying, um, I, and this, this plays off of, I guess, point number three here, which is, um, I always, I, I observe people in their photo habits sometimes, and I'm a visual observer and as we all are, but um, I watch people just kind of sit in one spot and pinch to zoom in more to get a better shot. Well, I, I like to use um, my feet as the zoom a lot of times. And I used to like, I use my feet to zoom out as well. So think of a moment, whether you're fishing, um, your buddy's just hooked up to a nice fish um, and kind of pre-visualize before that comes to be. Um, and think about the shot that you'd like, you know, and, and maybe think about some that you've seen, right? Um, maybe you don't need the, the, you know, the shot, the, the hero shot of the grip and grins or whatever. And if that's the case, I think that's, that's fantastic. Um, take three steps backward and see what the scene looks like then. And then take that same scene and take 30 steps forward and get as close as you can and see what works out on that end too. And I think the beauty of photography, like I mentioned earlier, it's, it's super subjective. So it's, it's, it's what you like. There are no wrong <laughs> ways to do this, right? Um, and I think a lot of what I see in photography and people wanting to communicate, it's, it just, it requires conscious effort um, to do it, just like our casts and our waiting and, and all the things that we work on within the angling community. Um, the light, I mean, you want to see, you want to see me um, put down my fly rod faster is when the, the light gets really nice. And I think the morning hours and the, and the um, evening hours, probably more for a lot of us anglers, just based off of the timing of when fish are active, um, is really special time to take photographs. And, and I would say position yourselves, you know, 360 degrees around, uh, whatever subject matter that is, um, whether that's a landscape, whether that's, um, a person, uh, fish, whatever it may be, I would suggest, um, coming at it from all different angles, right? Like, um, and what I mean by that is, uh, I think it has a lot to do with, um, you know, placing the sun maybe behind your subject for, for a shot, um, placing your subject in front, and you, then you'll have to understand how your shadow comes into effect, and so you'll want to back up a little bit more, right? Um, I, like, uh, I like following the keep them wet principle. I try to keep fish in water. I'll have some examples later on on that. Um, personally, and these are all just personal uh, preferences, uh, um, I don't use the, the added filters or any of the presets that are given to me. I like things to, um, and, and the reason for that is that I've studied photography. These books kind of all up here are all some of the greatest that I, I deem um, some of my favorites. Um, I study other photographers and I feel like in order for a photograph to be classic and to live on in perpetuity, which hopefully they can, um, in some way, shape, or form, whether that's in your shoebox or in a book or uh, hopefully, you know, off of a hard drive somewhere. But, um, you know, filters are kind of um, of the moment, of the time. Um, it could be a representation of that time, but I like to keep it clean. Um, you know, the panorama feature is actually a really cool thing that I've learned to um, stitch together a lot uh, within the phone. And I'm speaking strictly to the mobile device. And I'm assuming 
most of you all have the uh, the capability to do that within your phones right now. The panoramas are pretty neat. You can stop and start them at any point. You can get this really cool wide shot. It becomes a bigger, more robust file to work with later on, whether you want to put it on a canvas or uh, print or um, uh, anywhere else you'd like to use it. Um, and then, you know, it's the kind of the uh, Malcolm Gladwell effect of uh, photography is take lots of photos, you know, it's the 10,000 hour rule the the uh million photograph rule like in my head uh, we've all taken plenty of them but uh there's no reason to not take a lot you know you don't have to stop um at one you can you can work it and take a couple angles here so keep working on it. i mean storage is cheap uh for many of us i you know i say that uh as hard drives are 80 80 60 80 70 whatever it may be dollars at your local uh electronics or Amazon or whatever you choose. Um, and here's some of the tools. Um, and if you want to get fancy, I've put some of the things in here. I, I know some people, I know Fly Lords actually did a review of the item down to your lower right is the Axis Go uh, made by Aquatech. Um, and Aquatech's a company, I believe, out of California, but they do they make big robust housings like this for full cameras, um, but they also make them for the new iPhones, the new Android systems, uh, whatever your preference is there. Um, and I think those are pretty cool in the sense of, you know, you're kind of shielding your, your phone against uh, certain damage or not just damage, but over uh, underwater and overwater as well. Tripods are always cool. I love these little, um, Gorilla pods, they're called, up in the upper left. Um, you can wrap them around a tree, uh, rock, or you can combo it with. I've actually wrapped them around a boulder, um, snorkel down to the bottom of a river system, and been able to um, leave my, well, it was a GoPro in that instance, but uh, leave the GoPro um, on a rock and let the uh, kind of serves as a camera trap, if you will, uh, where I let the wildlife or the fish come through the frame after I've left and just kind of observed from up on shore. So there's a lot of choices out there. You can, you can, you can kind of tweak your phone to really become a pretty robust system. And like I said, it's never about the gear, but I know everyone wants to talk about it. And uh, a photographer's favorite lenses and cameras. Um, I don't know many photographers that want to fully geek out on uh, equipment. You can see I, <laughs> I've got one dangling, dipping in the water on this frame, and one held in my hand with various forms of tape on it, and a backpack full of uh, equipment. I think carrying even a drone on that backpack uh, up in Alaska. So, if you baby it, uh, you might not get the shot. If you ride it too hard, you might not have equipment left to use. But um, I tend to, I tend to use it use it hard because I know um, it's worth it. You know, take some risks and see what happens there. Um, so with that being said, we'll do this, this quick uh, gear overview, and if you all have any questions, um, feel free to ask. So recently, I have switched, and here's all of the big debate. Right, you can go. You can go Canon, Nikon, Fuji, Sony, Olympus, um, iPhone, Android, Samsung, whatever you want, right? Um, but I have recently switched to Sony. Um, I like their systems. They're, they're rather compact. Um, smaller is better, especially as we all um, carry a bunch of stuff anyway into the, into the stream. Um, and while we're fishing, we don't want to be carrying um, a lot of dead weight uh, around that we're not going to use. Um, so with that being said, uh, on, the, on the left side of my frame, um, I believe after several months, and I use this version, I was a Nikon person prior about six to eight months ago, but I believe that the 24 to 105 F4 might be my favorite all around lens. And, and I'll tell you why, like there's, there's, there, I get stuck on a boat a lot. Um, and, and with my children, my family and friends, um, and I say stuck on a boat, that's, that's, I, 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 I that's a good thing. Um, but when you're on a stationary object that you can't jump around and move angles 
a lot with um you need a zoom probably and you can get in there you can get wide and tight on that and um apertures these days with the high isos uh capability of these cameras um you're able to really utilize an f4 lens and and the price point comes down when you use those f4 f5 6 lenses so think about that um for kind of a good all around well, i'm gonna interrupt we have a question what's the new water resistance of phones good technique and capture okay cool yeah we'll get to that um i believe and i i can tell you for example when i was in oregon i dropped my phone in a creek um right as the water kind of cascaded over a rock and i lost it for a solid half hour in the water um i pulled it out and to my surprise it was still firing <laughs> so i think they've improved right from the old days of uh you can't breathe on them without them cracking breaking them or you know stopping working but with that being said i think if you do drop your phone or put your phone in the water i think it's good practice to shut it down and maybe just leave it uh uh on the on the hood of the car or somewhere warm that it's gonna not get too hot but uh dry out a little bit more i wouldn't I don't want to advise anybody to go test the waters unless you're really comfortable with your insurance plan. Um, <laughs> so with that being said, um, I do enjoy what's called prime lenses uh, in, in cameras and primes are fixed, fixed focal, uh, much like our, our phones, right? Like it's got one or two lenses on it. So um, this is a 35, a 3514, which is over here in the lower right. Um, it really forces me to um, think differently um, because I don't have the ability to stand on my two feet and zoom from 24 millimeters to 120. Um, so primes to me are are much better, sharper, less expensive example sometimes. And when you're getting into photography and you don't have to have the one four version. Again, I use this professionally. So there's a reason for why I'm choosing these. Um, the F2s, the one eights are all fairly inexpensive for as far as camera gear goes. You know, you can pick up a prime lens for sub $500 or heck, um, I use these, these are my bang around, uh, the Fuji, Fuji systems, right. With removable lenses. Um, these lenses are somewhere in the neighborhood of like $300, um, for the setup once you've bought into it. So again, you don't feel as bad when you're bumping it against a rock or dangling it in the water by accident or one of those items too. Um, I think that timidness of wanting, you know, worrying about hurting, hurting your, uh, hurting damaging your camera uh can maybe lead to less photographs taken let's see uh yeah jeff's pointing out good thanks jeff i just was telling chris how i i like yeah taking a picture of the fish in the net you know and um just i took me a while to trust at first it was trusting the the uh the life proof case on my phone and now it's trusting the fact that i don't need a case on my phone to right. put it in the water and take a picture but um you get some really cool shots that way mm -hmm. um you can take it from uh, kind of like you're used to use your feet analogy you can take it from further away and you get the net webbing and you can see the fish through the net webbing or you can get really close and line the the line it up with the you know with the gap and then yep. you shoot through and the yep. th other thing i mentioned is I like putting it in a really sunny spot because when it's underwater, it doesn't wash out. It creates a, such an awesome dapple effect across the fish. Yeah, and, and a lot of times, Jeff, that same shot I like to take also from straight uh, overhead too. Yep. And and I'll and I'll have the angler. The, the cool part about what you mentioned here, Jet Jeff, like leaving the fish in the net is it's submerged in the water. Um, we're trying not to stress fish out. Um, so we're pre-visualizing and, and if Jeff catches a fish and I want to get a photo of it and it's a really nice fish, um, hey man, like I know what I want to do. I'm going to come over there and I'm going to shoot this shot with my phone straight down and you're, I'm going to step uh, position myself so my shadow is not cast over the net. And, uh, and I'm shooting this really cool shot with all those, like you said, the kind of octagonal design of the net um, uh, kind of making it a little more interesting as well. And you can, 
um, just pull the net up slightly to get the fish out for a hot second and then do the release as well. I also like the release shot too, um, based on that. And a lot of times I'll just, people ask me like, well, what do you want me to do? And I'll say, you do whatever you want. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to be right here. I'm shooting this way. Um, whether or not I'm, um, you know, with my phone, you can actually, uh, side note, you can put your thumb down on the screen. I know on iPhones and you're able to control the exposure then. Um, and that way you can pull down and get the exposure, right? Lock it. And that's what I do a lot with these iPhones is I'll lock exposure a little bit before even the fish is caught. If I know I want to get a cool shot, um, I'll lock it. I'll run around with it. Um, that way I'm not worried about fiddling with the phone and I'm worried about just hitting the shutter real quick, whether that's on a hand and a release with the tail, which is super cool, or, you know, just barely the top of the fish coming in to the water on the release as well. So I hope that helps. Um, there's a lot of cool ways to kind of work with that. So that's camera gear, uh, not um, super important. I feel like these days based on the quality of these mobile devices, but if you're willing, if you're wanting to get more into it, I'm always around, reach out to me on Instagram or email um, and I'm happy to talk about it with you. I can geek out all day. I put this in here because um, I've learned this with a few folks that I work with at Trout Unlimited and that I fish with is social fishing is a lot of fun because I put this because I'm I find it hard to fish and take photos sometimes um, and so what I'll do um, is I'll we'll leapfrog each other um, you know it's my turn to fish and you know make a few casts especially this this works really well if it's a smaller stream say dry flies up in the high country or a little brook trout stream that you know there's a bunch of fish in um, that to me is a lot of fun because then I'm, I'm working the photo angle while they're fishing and then I get my fishing in and they can do what they want if they want to take photos that's great too if they just want to sit and watch like I enjoy um, that component I recently did that with a co-worker of mine Kara Armano up in the Mosa Creek uh, in southeastern or southwestern Colorado. And I just, I, I got reminded about how much fun that is. So these are uh, our friends, of course, Garrison and Kryn, um, best people to social fish with out there. And it's a lot of laughter and you get a lot of cool photos. So, so to do that, we, 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 are, we are doing that to document. And I put in a few of the reasons why we're taking photos, a few of my reasons. And I believe these are also um, resonate with a lot of you guys. Um, when I go into a situation that I know I need to document and take a lot of photographs, I think um, wide, medium, and tight. Um, those are the three things that are kind of going on in my head. And I think one thing to not forget, even if we're looking at the back of these things, is um, don't forget to look all around the frame. And, and, and I say that, what I mean by that is um, we need to look at every corner, whether that's um, the upper left, upper right, in, in the dead middle. Um, if you notice, you know, nothing is ever dead centered. Um, the, the horizon lines are always in the lower third or in the upper third or um, the persons in the lower left. Um, there's a reason for kind of drawing people into the, the places that we're working in and fishing in that we're all so lucky. Like, I don't know many places that are really terribly ugly to fish in for, uh, especially for cold water species. Um, and I think, you know, that works to our advantage a lot. Sometimes you just got to understand how to use this. And I, I think any of these photos here had been taken with pro level cameras, but can be done with an iPhone. Um, the people, the people are huge. You know, again, um, this is another situation where it's like, if you need to, if, if you need to just stand back and watch and not fish, like that's a good opportunity, especially if you're getting a drink of water or taking a break for the day, or if you've caught, sometimes if I've just caught a couple of fish and I'm just really happy with that outcome on my day, I, I tell myself it's time to start taking some photos, you know, and this, this will benefit you. This will benefit your chapter. This will benefit even some of the national work that we do um, by collecting these quality images um and recognizing that they're useful um in their own way the volunteers you know if you're at an event you're working a you're working a, an event and you're like look i've spent the first uh, hour of this event you know doing the hard work doing the tree planting um uh, helping with the habitat helping with the 
uh, fish, fish counts, whatever it may be um, that you're up to, um, don't forget to maybe budget in some time. And, and, and I don't mean just like that quick snapshot and go. It's really kind of read the room and see what's going on and um, who's there and, um, you know, be polite, tell them why you're taking a photograph, of course, and, um, you know, really respect that, that this needs to be done as well. And it's part of the job. So don't feel like you're giving up your volunteering or your, the opportunity there um, to document. That is part of it. And we need more of that, frankly. Um, the projects, um, you know, you guys all have great projects out there. Um, I think these also need documented. A lot of times our field staff are doing some of that, but they're not able to um, work with all the volunteer projects. I think it's really a valuable asset to have some of these. Um, this one in particular, um, sorry, um, this one in particular was shot with uh, a drone. Uh, drone technology is very advanced these days. Um, we hold FAA licenses to do the work that we do. We get permits um, in places to do that. So I would definitely, if you're going to go down that road, I would definitely be very conscious of what you're doing, um, all the rules and regulations that follow there. So um, the fish, of course, right? We live for it. Um, that's that's a, a big reason of why we're documenting it. And so these, uh, fish shots can be, uh, I have some examples coming up, the kind of good, bad, and ugly, if you will, a little bit, or good, bad, or best maybe is what I uh, deemed it as. Um, but I try to keep them in near, in the net, around the water um, as much as possible. I just don't, I'm not personally drawn to the the hoisted fish. It doesn't, it doesn't really do it for me. Um, maybe it does for others, and that's totally Fine as well. I just think we need to be a little more, uh, just a little respectful of the fish as well. Uh, the lifestyle. Um, I, you know, we're all traveling to these places, and whether it's in your hometown or whether it's the place you've never been before, I think um, we forget that you know, the miserable moments maybe deserve uh, documentation sometimes. Uh, uh, this in one in particular here is in if folks recognize it in Dutch John, Utah, one of the couple gas stations there on the Green River below the Flaming Gorge. One of the first photos I made at Trout Unlimited actually with fellow photographer Tim Romano pictured here. Um, just kind of says it all. We had to pull under this uh, gas station awning to rig up and uh, get ready as it was downpouring. So <laughs> I remember I remember the smell. I remember the temperature, everything going on in that shot. So and the humor. Um, don't forget the humor. Um, life's funny. People are funny. Kids are really funny. Um, we all know that. Uh, it's, it's, it's not to be missed in my world. You know, don't forget to just keep your camera going, whether it's a video, uh, a still photo, a lot of times a humorous photo can really go a long way um, in communicating that as well. So this is my son. <laughs> three, four years old or something, he decided that was, that was when my net actually looked like it was good. Now it has a lot of holes in it. A um, few examples of how, what I deem is like, okay, fish photos, you know, I used an example of me as the, the okay photo because I didn't want to like spotlight anybody or call anybody out that's unnecessary. But um, I've been known to even hold fish poorly. I've learned a lot over my years. I'm sure you all have as well. Um, I deem this as an okay photo. Um, the fish is still dripping. I did not hoist it out of the water, but it's a little bit high for my uh, liking these days. Um, better. Um, here's our friend Corinne again. She's she's really good at catching fish. Um, so if you want to take good fish photos, her and Garrison, and there's so many others, but they're good at it. Um, I backed off with this shot, um, low angles. Uh, and I don't know if I mentioned that before in technical photography terms, but um, a lot of these cameras too, if you have a SLR, you know, they have flip out screens. So it acts like a right angle straight down into the screen. Well, I like to keep my angles low, high. I sometimes, you know, as much as I like to move my feet forward and back, I like to crouch down or stand or get above things. Um, and in this instance, I use the longer lens, which you can do with the portrait modes or the zooms on the iPhones as well. All this is relatable to mobile. Um, but 
as the release is happening, just watching her enjoy this moment. I had no instruction on her at this time. She just caught a really nice fish and I was happy that she was doing it. So I stood back and photographed it from probably 40, 40 yards away. Josh, on that one, were you conscious of the rod driving to the upper corner of that frame when you took that picture? Did you change your, your angle so you could get that piece in too? That's a great, that's a good point, Jeff. Um, so yeah, you have to be conscious of things coming out of people's heads um, or backs or necks or arms or cutting body parts and off in a weird way. Yes, if I took, say, 10 steps to my left here and photographed it kind of coming in at that angle, I would have a rod coming out of her forehead, right? Um, so you have to be conscious of like what's, and that was part of the explanation for being aware of what's happening in the frame a little situational awareness. Like I saw everything was happening in this frame before I took the photo. Um, yeah, there's some things that are weird about it, right? Like her fly line is kind of disheveled and stuff, but we're not here to do commercial photography. This is real life, you know? Like, heck, my rod's probably like floating downstream if I'm, as, if I'm releasing a fish, who knows? But, um, you know, for the most part, like, yeah, being conscious of what's happening. Um, I think heads are weird. It would draw you away from it, but that's a good point, Jeff. Um, better, you know, uh, that little uh, Axis Go water housing for a phone, this could, this could easily happen with that. Uh, fish is in the water, ready to be released. It's beautiful out. We've got all these beautiful colors. Um, we're crouched at a low angle um, and the fish is about ready to go. So just take a picture and let her go. Um, and uh, that's, that's a huge thing for me. So color, uh, yeah, here's another thing. <laughs> I actually learned this one a lot from uh, our friend at Fish Pond, Johnny LeCoke, who uh, is also a photographer, um, but he um, loves bright colors on his, his models, if you will, his anglers. Um, and I'd agree with that too. Um, my, one of my first experiences photographing somebody in, down in New Mexico, northern New Mexico, wearing all camouflage around a bunch of basalt cliffs. Um, I think he probably knows I'm talking about him in this photo and that. That's what makes I call them out on it and a joke, but like an angler blends into the scene, it makes it very challenging for a photograph to stand out. So you're looking for colorful nets and trees and blue skies and green shirts and colorful fish um, for clarity. And in this shot, if I was shooting this with a mobile uh, phone, iPhone, whatever you use, uh, I would definitely have already tapped on the fish prior, like tapped on the screen on the fish, brought down the exposure had it locked, ready to go. So I'm not, I'm prepared well before the fish is out of the water to be released at all, if it is even coming out of the water. Um, and that way I have that, have that shot I want. And then if you don't get the shot, don't hold on to the fish, just let it go. You know, like a lot of photography, good photography, in my opinion, is you creating your own luck. And like, if you're there and you're present around, you know, fish being caught, there's days where fish aren't caught and that's fine too. Uh, maybe you want to focus on a different angle uh maybe you want to focus on the people the rods the hands tying on flies the um dry shake going on and people blowing i forgot to put that one in there that's always kind of a fun one um but there's other ways to kind of tell your story um rather than just through fish but for those that are really wanting to get better at fish photography i would encourage keeping it low keeping it quick and simple we live in a kind of a visually driven driven world. Um, again, I encourage I encourage you all to participate with me in telling um, our story at Trout Unlimited and, and the things you're working on. And I want to see that. So um, an easy way to find me is direct message through Instagram, um, Trout Unlimited's Instagram, um, or my email, which is easily searchable, or we can figure out how to share that here too as well, Jeff. So. That is kind of the quick and dirty rundown of uh, how I've uh, positioned this uh, statement here. I'm gonna stop sharing, Jeff. I don't know that we have, I didn't see a ton of questions, but that's okay too. <clears throat> Thanks Jeff for sharing that. Yeah, um, not a problem, I didn't put it on Facebook, but not that it matters, that <laughs> so you could find you easily anyway. Yeah, oh, yeah, off. so. Um, Jeff, do you, do you, have you had any good questions come up and, you know, you're within the volunteer sphere very deep. And I know you've talked about this with me a lot. Do you have any thoughts based on questions you've been asked? 
Yeah, sure. Uh, Rick, while I'm thinking about that, Rick just asked about tips for solo anglers um, when you're alone. Rick, I actually, um, you know, that that's where your your mobile phone is 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 really helpful uh, for sure. Um, I want to uh, I want to see if I can pull something up. So I actually did a. Uh, um, oh God. Oh, where am I? That's where, and if I do, don't mind if I interject. That's where a net can obviously come in very handy. A very, uh, a very, uh, a net with. I like the ones with either the clear or the the dark black rubber. The dark black rubber is really cool if you have light because then you can kind of pull the fish just a little out of the water and then shoot down. If you have the fish, the net in one hand and the camera, the phone in the other, um, you're able to shoot directly down on things. Um, the release is hard, I think, in a lot of ways. Um, if I'm a solo angle angler, I'm probably not photographing my fish a whole bunch, admittedly. I am working on the, the you know, the landscapes and the, the water or the slow-mo videos of the water going by or the loop that just comes to me or whatever it may be, you know. Is my dog being super loud? <laughs> I just she's I don't having get a, bad now. she's having a party on her back over there. So just by herself, just kind of scratching, scratching. Uh, Rick. So this weekend, I, I had to go out, and um, I had to go out. I had an I had the the benefit of an hour out, um, and uh, now I got to buzz both dogs because I'm talking. Um, and so, a I caught one fish. I was ready for that picture, as you see. I'm 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 right at water level. I'm actually taking the shot with my left hand on my iPhone. Um, the nice thing and knowing that it's waterproof, I had everything ready to pull it out of the net. I let the net float downstream because it wasn't going to go that far away from me. I didn't worry about that. I just worried about getting that shot. So I took one shot and then I slid my phone, my finger over, did video, did yeah. the release. Right. Um, and then the rest of the day I focused on scenic shots. Like I wanted to, to highlight our clean my water campaign. So I was picking up trash. And I wanted to make sure that I got a good picture that showed the river and the trash and yeah. things of that nature. I took one close up of the wet fly I was using um, and things of that nature. So th that one fish picture was a bonus, but I was thinking about how do I tell the story of this day kind of the whole time I was I was out there. Um, and yeah. so for me, I, I would say, you know, just getting comfortable with your phone um, more and more. And, and you know what, as Josh said, if I if if I if I took the shot and it was a crud picture of that fish, the fish is you let the fish go. Um, I honestly, the, the the one nice thing with a lot of these the smartphones now, the high level they take, especially if you're just thinking about it for digital repurposing, like taking a slow mo video or taking a video, you can pull stills off of that. Mm -hmm. So like that video of that fish being released, I could pull a still or two off of that for for social media or for web. It wouldn't be good enough for for you know a magazine but um it would be good enough for web uh, and honestly one of the things i really love watching or, or I, I mean it stops me every time is somebody who does a slow-mo video of a, a trout sliding off their hand and swimming away underwater um yeah, and i'll, I'll watch 100 of those in, in an evening so, you know another thing that i've a tip that i learned is you can turn the side buttons here into a, a shutter trigger so yep. a lot of times when we're holding it it's weird with our thumb over here you know and so if you know you can hold it like this as you're releasing the fish and i use these like volume buttons on the side i've learned how to use that as a trigger mechanism it's a setting within your camera on the um the camera settings on your phone but a lot of phones have that capability of an alternative trigger point for your and it does and it will do a first as well so if i'm releasing the fish much like jeff show i'll hold it down while i'm releasing the whole thing and i'll have 15 photos the whole thing yeah Jason's got a really good content question. He says, as you look forward with TU and the current and future state of things, what message will you send? What places, projects do you look to feature? Um, let me take a crack and then I'll, I'll, I'll go to you. Jason, uh, one of the things that I would tell you um, as the director of volunteer operations and thinking about our work, one of the greatest assets that Trout Unlimited has is we have 300,000 members and supporters who are out on the water all the time. So the you know, we're today talking about taking beautiful photos, taking amazing fish photos, things like that. Probably the best photos all of us can be taking are photos that tell the story of climate change. 
um, photos that tell the story of dewatered streams, tell the story of de degraded habitat from cattle crossing or riparian buffers being cut down or you know, shopping plaza developments, depending on where you live in the country, and calling those problems out on our own personal social media channels, um, in our own communications, because we all have our own networks. And, 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 and you know, unfortunately, the vast, even though, you know, our sport is growing, even though the interest in the outdoors is growing, the vast majority of Americans don't spend nearly as much time outside as we do. Um, and our friends kind of rely on us to be a window into what's going on in the outside world and to put up that kind of that red flare, like, hey, things are things are really bad here. You know, we need to we need to do something about it. So I think for me, a lot of what I try to, to do is is have my my photography be a call to action to get more people to care and get more people to stand up. And then on the, on the, uh, well, I'd like to add to Jeff's too, the call outs. I mean, uh, I would like to um, keep things civil and um, pragmatic and also very, um, uh, you know, we can, we can look at both sides of the coin on that too. It, it's a conversation starter is the way I look at it too, into how we can do things differently, whether that's water going into sewers that are that is way too warm or, um, like some of the things you mentioned, Jeff, and I think, you know, for me, and a lot of the work I do, since I don't work on a lot of, um, I work on a lot of the, I used to work on a lot of the protect campaigns with our public lands out here out west. And it for me, it brings people to a place that they may or may not be able to experience. Um, and that and I'm talking about decision makers. I'm talking about um, different folks that need to understand the value behind um, keeping these places as they are, or even improving upon them. So um, think of it as like, I, you know, I, I forget who asked that question originally, Jeff, but whoever they are and wherever they're located, there's a probably a big chance that I've never been there before. And I would love to understand what it looks like and what it feels like to be there. Um, because then it keeps me as an ally, it keeps me as somebody who's interested in um, you know, a creek in State College, Pennsylvania, perhaps, or where you are, Jeff. It's like I don't know anything about that, but I, I ask it thing to see it from their perspective. Yeah, absolutely. Think about Probably. that as well. Yeah, I should check. I forgot to check the Facebook for questions there, but but this is cool. And I and I again, like, uh, like I mentioned to earlier. You know, I love engaging with this. I love engaging folks into creating better content for these things. Um, and I and I and I and I really am happy to always discuss this. This is um, within my wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm trying to think of other other questions that I've heard frequently from volunteers. Uh, one other thing, I know a lot of people get hung up in. You know, you've taken a photo and now what, right? It lives on the cloud on your phone. It lives on your hard drive. Um, I make prints a lot. They're cheap if you look at any place and I stash them all throughout the house or in a box or whatever it may be. But if you're editing photos, I know on the iPhone, I, I'm 99.9% .9 certain on the other devices as well, the editing suite within those things to improve uh, maybe the tone or the contrast or something like that is really robust these days. And I've actually, as a professional photographer, I'll even use the actual, uh, if you hit the edit button on your phone on, on a photo, like I actually use that. It, it can do anything from saturation to black points, to contrast to uh, exposures, to highlights, shadows, anything will bring out, you know? So if you've got somebody wearing a hat and there's a big shadow right under their head, um, if you didn't shoot that, you know, in a way that has them tilted up a little bit or something, because I know we all wear hats out on the stream, um, you know, you can bring out those shadows a little bit more to see a little bit better on their face. So keep that in mind when you're like going through your photos and kind of, you know, editing them as you see fit. Yeah, that actually reminds me, what, not so much fish photos, because obviously when, when someone's catching, releasing or handling a fish, my, my goal is to have that fish be in the net and back in the water, you know, as, as fast as possible. But a lot of times when I'm taking, you know, shots of people planting trees or, you know, picking up trash and whatnot, um, I'll take the shots that I can get and then I'll, I'll, I'll restage them to take them better. Yeah. Um, you know, so like that picture of, of Corinne, I saw where she's releasing that fish. One of the things that I wondered was, 
as she was bringing that fish in, did you tell her, hey, Corinne, knock the brim of your hat up a quarter inch and tuck the strand of hair over the back of your ear so that it's not blocking your face? Because that that's, you know, so that's some of the advice I'm, I'm often giving my, my subjects. And it t- took me a while to get comfortable to give that kind of guidance to people who are planting a tree at a, at a TU event, be like, hey, I need you to right. put, put your hat up. Um, one thing I, I, I've learned, um, almost every single uh, fishing picture I take of people when they're in the act of fishing, they look sad, mad, worried, or stressed. And so what I usually do is I've got my camera ready. I've got my, you know, my exposure all set and all that. And then then I'll say something like, you know, the funny thing is nobody ever smiles when they're fishing because they're so focused on doing it right that that they like, they're not having a good time. They immediately do what Josh did. They just, they, they light up, they laugh, they smile. That's when I take the picture. Um, so there's, there's a lot of stuff that I'll, I'll, I'll do when I'm taking pictures of, of people like that. Um, especially when they're, I mean, when they're in the act of trying to double haul, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's, it's, they, 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 they tongues out, they look like they're taking a, a physics test or something. Right. right. Yeah. And I, I think to play with that idea along that, those lines, Jeff, is if I, uh, kind of my cover my butt photos, right. If you will, I, I have another word for that, but Uh, when I was in the newspaper world, you know, you get to a situation, you get the shots that you know you have to have, and then you start looking for shots that you know you really want. And like, um, with that being said, it's like, yeah, I've documented the tree planting or whatever it may be. I got this big wide shot. I got the hands tight shot. I've got a nice smile on somebody's face or whatever. Now it's like, okay, cool, man. Like, I still want to take photos. Like now I'm going to lay down in the grass and I'm going to shoot through two blades of grass and get that coming out of the frame and um you know frame somebody within that um and just get a little different with what you're doing and i think like that that kind of gives you that opportunity once you've got your safety shots you you can go and try to get the shots that you think are maybe going to draw a little more attention to uh your photography or the event or whatever it may be but yeah i told people jeff and i you know i can tip that up a little bit or you know turn a little this way from time to time i'm I usually like to make sure that I'm aware of what's going on in that frame or I'll position. I try to position myself differently before I make other people get positioned differently. Um, but yeah, I think that's an okay thing to do from time to time. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Other questions we're coming up on the hour. I want to honor your time and Josh's time and, but any other questions, comments, feedback? Don't be afraid to let the light be your best friend though. I mean, like turn, like shoot right into the sun, man, or, or, you know, get down low and take the exposure off the sky with your phone. Like you can drag that shutter, that exposure down enough to where you get a cool silhouette, you know, like things, things that we can think of, you know, if you're not catching fish, you can definitely get low to the water and create this cool silhouette of an angler and back cast. And then you eliminate the faces that Jeff is talking about, you know, (laughs) cause you can't see it. It's just an outline of a human with a fly rod, which is cool too. So. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, everybody, thanks so much for joining us. Um, Please do tune in for the rest of the trout week content. We've, we've got a lot of great stuff coming up. Um, one of the subjects you saw uh, in the photograph, Garrison Doctor, who's uh, from Rep Your Water with his wife, Corinne, uh, Garrison will actually be doing a step-by-step uh, drawing on how to bring a brown trout to life tonight at 7 on uh, Fly Lord's Instagram, but I think we're sharing it, and so is uh, Rep Your Water. Um, and then uh, we'll actually be uh, raffling off, or sweep, there'll be a sweepstakes for that that piece of art uh, benefiting to you from Garrison. Yeah. So that's tonight at seven Eastern five mountain. Um, so thanks so much again for joining. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in to trout week and we'll see you all uh, on the next event. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank Josh. you all. Be well. Bye-bye. Bye now.